You really have 10 children? Oh, really? 10. I had, I had seven by the time I was 22. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? What? Yo, while you were dunking the ball, I was dunking my ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is good? What is right? How you living? How you feeling? I am back here in the Shahuka Studios with the one, the only Shaquille O'Neal, who has an earring hanging on his glasses. And across from us is a man with so much of credits that he needs to be truly appreciated. This is a man that is a comedian with specials and tours. He is an author. He is a father. He is a man with 13 million followers, but he only follows one man, the Lord. That one felt good. <laughs> He has a million dollar smile. He has eyes that make women go, what are you mixed with? It is the one, the only country Wayne in the place to be. Oh, hey. I like the way you brought me in, bro. Hey, don't, hey, don't let him fool you with that. You know, <laughs> because you know how they talk about privilege? Yeah. This is our fourth show. He only been here twice. <laughs> he only been here twice. But I told Listen, him, no, but. Amy Moore, Shaq. I told him, I said, uh, country Wayne was coming. Oh, I'm coming down to do that one. Yeah. I'm coming down to do that one. I saw him on Netflix. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Yo, hey, that make me feel special, man. Brother, I I just want to give you your flowers. Man, appreciate it, man. I love comedy. Mm -hmm. I like to laugh. Shaq All-Stars. I'm on this thing all the time. Yeah. And I, I just didn't really know of you, mm -hmm. but last four or five years I've been here, I've been seeing you all over the place. And I've been hearing some things. I, I want to clear some things up. For sure. You really have 10 children? Oh, really? 10. I had, I had seven by the time I was 22. Oof. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. what? Yo, while you were dunking the ball, I was dunking my ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 yeah. You, was on the, you know when you was dunking the ball, somebody out there just swinging their heels. He was the first guy that I saw <laughs> saying my pullout game is weak. Oh, yeah. He was, and I was, because I've been I, proud of him. Hold on, that's for real. Yeah. It's, like, I thought it was part of your skit. No, nah, it's weak. It's be like, it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot of energy to back out. Man. I'm already <laughs> here. You know, yeah. Especially when you hood projects he's like we here together man <laughs> so you're from where atlanta i'm from um no nah, miller in georgia where's that at? small town it's about between augusta and savannah oh okay small town three thousand people so do you come from a big family yeah kind of like on my mama's side a lot of cousins uh i got a lot of sisters and brothers on my daddy's side two sisters on my mama's side so one of the families big family everybody chill kicking it and how old are you um 36. you know what I, I talked about this on my show last week. I don't want people giving me these comments, but, but I got to give you a compliment. You're a good-looking brother. Man, hey, you too, man. No, no, like I, I thought you was you much younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want you to call me beautiful either. But no, I actually, I actually thought you was much younger. Didn't you think you was younger? Well, no, I looked it up. Okay. Some well, people think yeah. I'm older by the way I act. You know what I mean? They hit the kids and stuff, but people, when they look, sometimes they think I'm younger. But if they don't know nothing about me, they'll think I'm younger. But when they know my history... They be like, they think I'm older. So I, I think I'm funny and I do a lot of skits. Oh, yeah, you funny, man. Are your skits automatic or do you have to think about them? And, like, off the top, man. I do, off I, the top. I do them skits like water. I probably got like 6,000 skits online. I drop wow. nine skits a day. But now I got producers dropping other ones. But, man, I, it just, just never wrote it down. I just come up with a concept, boom, boom, shoot it with a cell phone. No editing. Cut off action and cut. Yeah, let's get it. That was how I saw him. So, like, I know 2014 was your first viral one with, mm -hmm. like, girlfriend makes the food, can't cook, so you're faking it. Mm -hmm. But that's what it was. That's where I felt like the internet changed, where everybody was doing this high production stuff. And people like yourself were like, it's going to be one shot. There's not going to be anybody else there. It's just me talking, and my delivery and my concept is going to carry it. But you know why I did that? Because I'm country, right? Mm. So, country, we don't got a lot of information. We ain't slow. But I didn't know editing exists. So I thought everything was one shot. So I taught mm. myself a skill without me knowing it. Yeah, and now that's a style. Now, yeah, it's a, it's a style, but it, a lot of people still can't do it. Three mm. minutes, 
three, three, I told Facebook to give me a hundred million dollars and I teach people. Yeah. Because I know what they wanted people to do when they came right. up with monetization. Right. They don't want reels. No. They they want what Country Wayne ain't doing, but I'm like, I accidentally taught myself because I didn't know until I got to Atlanta that people was cutting. So I had to keep I had to keep that's why I came so expressive because I had to keep people attention yes. for three minutes without the editing. So I knew I was gonna like him because I saw in a different interview you did, you really gravitated to like Robert Greene's books, mm, 48 Laws of Power, sure. Art of Seduction. Yep. And so he wrote 48 Laws of Power, which is like outlawed in jail. It's an incredible book. Yeah. But so much of it is like, if you're weak here, find a strength in it. Mm -hmm. So did you do that? Like at, This was before you probably read all those books. Um, no, right? that was actually after the books. So do you think that kind of helped you at all? Oh, yeah. The yeah. books, um, I, I read those books like 2009, mm. 10, 11. Then I picked up the Bible 2012. And once I picked up the Bible, I just keep reading over and over. I'm on a night trip. I don't read any more books anymore. But before that, I read Become a Meaner God's Way. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, yeah. and I read uh, Arts of Seduction and 48 Laws of Power. And those laws, you know, you know, reading is like a pill. When you take a pill for your knee, you don't know how it's going to heal your knee. You just see the, the so all the those books. Goes yeah, down. I was serious about it. Because those, those stories in uh, 48 Laws of Power and all that, so I That's moved the like thing. That. It's not just the laws, it's like the stories, the stories. are like the in and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. The stories and the proof, for have, sure. Have you ever had a skit that wasn't funny? Oh, yeah. But I, I, I don't. A lot of them I don't try to make funny because funny only last short periods of time. Say that again. A lot of stuff I don't try to make funny because you got more longevity. Mm. Now my stuff went into more the drama because if you keep being funny, 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 some of the biggest movies in the world come. When I, I Google and seen comedy, the biggest movies was only like uh, Hangover. Comedy don't make as much money as people think. It does not. So I was like, oh, you can't get, keep. I bet with you too, you had a lot of people, I bet a lot of the comments on your videos are like, that's so true, or this is how it is for Yo. me. Like you have people relating to it just as much as they're laughing at it. Yo, that's the main thing. So I was like, uh, and Chris Rock taught me that with comedy without me knowing it. Because mm -hmm. when I first started, I had him, <sighs> I thought I was killing. Then he was like, it can't be a pep rally. And I'm like, damn. Hold on, it can't be a pep rally when you're at a comedy like, show? Yeah, he don't want it. And I thought about it. The ones who make the most money are oh, the yeah. ones who could tell a story. Think about Chappelle right now. Chappelle. Chappelle will tell a 20 minute story. Bill Burr. Yeah. yeah. All those guys, I'm like, the people on Dev Jam, which I love, not, a lot of them never got wealthy. Mm. Chris Rock um, slowed me down because mm. it's made me start telling like stories because I watched the big comedians, Kevin Hart, when he did Laugh at My Pain. He started telling them stories. Right. And all this. And Tony Roberts, one of my favorite comedians. I'm talking about on the Packers show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tony Roberts. Yeah, he he going real beast. every time. Yeah, I beast. was like, damn, why they can't get big? But what it is, a lot of those jokes, when you do hit them, hit them, hit them, when they leave, they don't remember you. Versus they your, remember the feeling. They remember they the feeling, remember the but jokes. They, don't, they don't remember that thing. And it's so true. You think back, Def Comedy Jam, you only had five minutes. Something like a Shaq roast. The roast is so. Comedians are coming up seeing that and emulating that when really, you're right, they're telling You gotta do that too now, but you yeah, just yeah. can't do it for 45 minutes. Shaq, have you ever thought about doing stand-up? No, stand-up terrifies me because I've seen a lot of guys, if that first, second, and third joke don't hit, you're done. You're done for the rest of the night. Like I used to when I was in LA. Do you like to... watching people bomb or no? Does it no, make I you don't. uncomfortable? No, I don't. I, don't, I, I never want to see anybody bomb. Yeah. When I go to a comedy show, I want to laugh. And I'm one of these old school audience members. Nothing gets under my skin. Yeah, you're good. Like, yeah, yeah. Like good. my my favorite moment was what's the uh, big girl from our Saturday Night Live? Big girl. Big, oh, um, big big Les. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Les. Yeah. Leslie. She came in and called me to her one day and ripped me a new one for 20 minutes straight. And you were loving it. I was loving it. I life. wanted to start asking this to guests. When was the first time that you remember like? watching Shaq or had a moment of Shaq because I feel like like you had that moment with Gigi on, right. on TNT where he heard your voice and he was like oh I get like that all the time with people I wanted to know did, what, did you do you remember like watching him at all watch him talk and move besides basketball with blue chips mm. oh, blue chips yeah <laughs> yeah blue chips and you know we watch all Kazam sure. you know what I mean I, I was watching oh you. you know about Kazam yeah I watched your movies oh you know what? Stop the podcast. Country Wayne know about Kazam. This shit talking. Oh, <laughs> that movie hit, right? Because that, 
I didn't. Oh, no, I'm trying it, to tell him. I thought Kazam was fun to watch. I thought it was. I, yeah. I watched Everyone it uses times. it as an example of like not a good movie. Right. I thought Kazam was uh, fun. Kazam was. No, no, but, but, you know, but you know, I always tell him, I said, first of all, that movie is for kids. If you're watching it yeah. as an adult, something's wrong with you. Yeah. This movie for, for bad. And, you know, okay, my kids, when I showed them, I actually thought I was magic. <laughs> I actually thought I was magic. Like, they actually thought I could do real magic. Cause like I know I, you, you probably tried to mess with him. I, I did. What'd you do? Magic. <laughs> that movie was dope. Like I had some, I had like a, I had like a string with, with some thing in, in, in the uh, theater that we had. And then I had the string that they couldn't see. And I said, remember that candy scene? Well, daddy can do that in real life. No, you can't. And, and the candy, candy fell from the ceiling. Yeah, but it's, oh my God, my daddy's magic. <laughs> remember they're older now. It's just well, a good joke premise. Shaq oh as a genie. That was, it was you know, like you, you could take that. He'll pop in it. Yeah. The, um, just every, that whole movie, man. I remember the I scene that. where they were like goat eyeballs. Right. Yeah. Oh, That's yes. the one scene I remember was he, the guy offering you goat eyeballs. He made it sound so good when he ate them, though. Would you like some of these goat eyeballs? <laughs> the characters that you come up with, like Drip. Like, I actually thought Drip was real. Like, I saw the one you did with T.I. Tio. What's up with you? What's happening? What's happening? I'm chilling. What's up? Hi, right, bro. It, it's Drew. Uh, nice to meet you. Hey, so, yo. Exactly. What am I here? What are we, what are we doing? Oh, it's we have in the business. I got a Drew Entertainment, and he said he know you. So I was like, I was going to spend some money. But since you here, I was like, since you came to my establishment, yo, so I was going to just get you on the track. And just you just get on there, spit your oil, and do that. You know, know them big words. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think you quite. A, I think you may have misinterpreted the circumstances he, he go. because I think I thought that was real. Yeah, like how'd you come up with that? Well, you know, I'm from the streets. All my family hustle. I was in the street hustling before coming, so that was a part of me, the version I could put out. So it was like I'm sure I was showing people the streets because that's where I come from. I ain't never had a gun, but you know, I hustle. I yeah. got me some money. So drip was like. Cause I'm so far removed from that, it was so easy to tap in. Mm. And shout out to Desi Banks, he was doing the hood dudes. I was like, oh, this my lane. People don't know, cause I was speaking lingo that the streets knew that I knew what I was right. talking about. Four way, two in the bay, yuck, yuck, yuck. So it was that version of me that I knew was gonna grab the culture. Did you see that skit? Of course, I saw the one with Ludacris when his car like, got stolen. Like, yeah. good moments. So when you when you shoot these skits, you shoot them on iPhones, you shoot yeah, them on shoot cameras. Them yeah. yeah, I saw on your GQ thing, you have three phones. Mm -hmm. One is for phone calls, mm -hmm. one is for the industry, and one is strictly to shoot video. Oh, yeah. That video phone, the truth. We don't play, we treat it like a baby. I was going to say, is that the prized possession? Man, that dope in a, you know, this how, this how we making money. It's yeah, content. yeah, yeah. I, I try, really, I can do real estate and all that, but I still got to buy that AC unit. Mm. I still got to fix that roof. I still got to pay taxes. But content, once it sits in that phone, yeah. It's a tax write-off. It, it's it's hidden money. It's the real. If by the end of the year, if I, I try to have more content I can, so I can write off. If you, you know, if you don't spend a million dollars of content, yeah, at least the government ain't finna get four hundred, five hundred of that because they can't tax what they can't see. So the did, con you, did you have a moment where so like vi going viral is one thing. When did it turn into a business? Off the real, when I went viral, I had a nightclub, so I was just using the viral moment to pack to my club. People. Interesting. So then when I realized the comedy thing, I was like, oh, I got to go do stand-up. But when I did stand-up, I was like, dog, it's kind of taking me away. I was getting comfortable because stand-up, I ain't going to lie, it was easy to me. Mm. And I was like, but this took me away from who I became. Now I'm back working, but I ain't a hustle no more. Then when the pandemic hit, I said, I knew I shouldn't have never got out my hustle because now I can't make no money. Mm. So during the pandemic, I figured out how to make that money on social media. Like, make my money. It's like an artist who can make money off his music and tour. What was the first check you got from social media? First check was 27000 that month. I made 27000 I said, oh, I'm finna be rich. Working with like brands and stuff? No, I, I do the in-stream ads. That's why I don't curse or nothing. Mm. So I get that in-stream ad money. I love the convenience of having clothes to wear for different occasions. Whether I'm doing my podcast, working out, or doing a DJ set, having options in my closet is a must. American Giant makes clothing that fits into your life. They have an impressive selection to choose from. So if you're on the hunt for the perfect t-shirt, jeans, or super soft sweatshirts, American Giant has what you're looking for. My favorite is the crew t-shirt because when you're my size, not easy to find clothes that are both comfortable and fashionable. So shop closet staples that you can wear anywhere at American-Giant.com. Get 20% off your first order when you use code B-I-G at checkout. 
That's 20% off your first order at American-Giant.com. Promo code B-I-G. So when you when you put out a clip, and, and the reason why I ask this question, when I, I deal with a lot of companies, they try to send me skits because they want to go viral. So <laughs> my question to you is, do you try and go viral? Or do you just say, I'm shooting it like this? If it goes viral, cool. If not, it's still content. I go viral every time. I never thought oh, video did went viral. Like once I went viral, I mastered going viral because I just know what people got. Um, I trigger first before I try to make somebody laugh. So if it's a spades game, I'm like, I aim at just this audience. I don't aim at all the audiences at one time. So I trigger, I do trigger moments. So I'm like, they gonna hit this. Like when I put the cowboy video, they just lost. That That's how I came up. I got fans that like my cowboy videos. That's one section of fans. I got fans that like me dancing. Don't mention the Cowboys. You, you, you see my eyes <laughs> water? It. As much as you see want. my goddamn eyes water? Yeah. Are you a real Cowboys fan? Yeah, I'm a real Cowboys fan, man. How long? Your whole life? Man, you guys whole, both whole got life, so but, depressed when you started talking yeah, about Yeah, whole life, but die hard. Last 15. I used to tell people that Tuto Jones was my father. Because <laughs> <laughs> I started off playing football. Yeah. And I wanted to be like, it's, you know, there wasn't really a lot of tall guys playing, so I, I followed him. But You ever thought about playing football, Shaq? I yeah, did. What was the furthest you got? What, what, what position you played? I played tight end. Ooh. And I, I, I thought about it going to the NFL, but then uh, I was I was at the house one day, and my father came in and he hit me in the back of the head with this paper. There was this player from Atlanta, I don't know if you're familiar, his name was John Conkac. Mm. And he signed a contract for 15 for three. Mm-hmm. And my father went to watch him play. He was okay, but I was already doing better than him in high school. And I was like, the math thing I had enough for football. I'm going to start playing basketball. That, that's why I took that football physicality to basketball. Sure did, boy. You yeah. was cheating. Oh, I, yeah, hey, man. Had to, brother. Yeah. I was Laker, I'm a Laker fan, too. But I, I kind of, you ended my tumbo career, man. I had to. Yeah. No, because you know what? I'm going to tell you why. My thing is... I take it personally when you try to guard me one on one. Yeah, I do. And he was—he was like, "I'm the defensive player of the year. I don't need no double team." So, the first game we get, we get the ball, and I'm looking. There ain't no motherfucking double coming. <laughs> I said, "Okay." So now I gotta, you know, I'm back, and I give him a little move. He—he he don't block it, but he's close. I said, "Okay." Now he's trying to block my shot. Now I gotta motherfucking raise these elbows up. Zzz, zzz, yeah. zzz. And every time I turn, like, and see, instead of him going seven foot five, he was he was coming down to six eleven. And right when I turned, I was like, you know what? I'll probably get one or two offensive fouls, but he ain't gonna be able to take three or four or five of these a game. And he kept putting his face there, and I just, I kept touching him up. He had, he did. You ended his career, man. It ain't been the same. You I'm didn't so feel like sorry. you were cheating a little bit, like you was just no, so not at dominant. all, not at all. Was you even challenged out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Only time I got challenged was, was when I badly lost Kim Olajuwon because he was one I could like. So the game is 85%, you know, here mm-hmm. and 15% time, but I couldn't get into a Kim's head. Oh. <clears throat> because one, we had the same agent. I respected him. I wanted to be like him, and I really didn't talk to him. Uh-huh. Because, like, when I, uh, when I played, it's like, it's like what I tell him not to do now. Like, I always tell him don't read the comments. Oh yeah, but, can't read the comments. But I was, I would, I would wake up and just look in the paper. Just one word, Shaq ain't all that. All we gonna do is fire Shaq tonight. He like, like just, just that and that right there. And boy, that should have get me mad all day. So I just had to, had to do it. So you don't read the comments. No, no, nah, um, I don't really care about them. But I tell the people, my other actors, mm-hmm. don't read them because it affects. It does. I don't have it to. Does get not. It. No, 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 no. It can have an impact on people it if you let it have an impact it, on you. It don't I'm bother not, me at all. Yeah, but no. I see comments ruin people, man. Comments tearing the world up right now. Why? Why? If Which, I if I could explain Shaq, it. you Shaq, so it's hard. No, no, yeah. but, no but my theory is how can... Because I'll tell you why. I think a lot of performers, comedians and stuff like that, in the beginning they like they listen to people and they're really good at... at and what happens, though, is you reach a certain point where you have to understand that you're so talented and that you're so good at your craft that their input doesn't matter anymore. But I don't think people shut it off. And I think people just want to be loved. And yep. so I think when, they, when they're not loved, it really hits them. But I agree with you. I've changed okay. ever since you told That's me. That's why you probably you became Shaq, not because of your size, because of that mentality. Most people who reach that no, high but, level, you can't care. No, no like, like you came in with a couple of your fellas. Mm-hmm. Their comments should hurt you because you know them. 
Yeah, that's that's okay. how I feel. That's, that's what, what I be trying so, to tell people. Yeah. So why a comment from a person you don't know hurts you? That's like a person has no, not being funny, never been funny in high school, college, whatever, depressed at, at home, telling him he's not funny and he oh. believing it, and now he changed up his whole style. That, that, that's why I, I always What's tell crazier people. Crazier too is somebody could comment something, be like, "Oh, this sucked," and it gets a thousand likes, and then they're going around being like. <laughs> I guess I know what I'm talking like they feel better because yeah. other random me people are, are like I know it's crazy and it's crazy people skip over all the good comments somebody said and focus on that one so Always. I tell people man that's if you're doing that that's how you treat your family mm. because the people who love you you ain't giving them no attention attention people had to hate for you to get attention mm. if you give the people who love you the same attention you give haters you won't have you won't have no energy to give a hater mm. so a player true. told me one time if you live for them whoever they are, and you don't live for yourself, you will always be miserable. Mm -hmm. You know what I said? If you live for them, and you don't know who they are, you will always be miserable. You a pastor, Shaq. You guys yeah. both have that quality in you. No, he, he does, yeah. Nah, yeah man, he time Shaq say something, because what it is, man, Shaq, 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 everybody don't figure it out, Shaq intelligent. He hated with a lot of laughing back in the day, but now you realize <laughs> the whole time he was playing, it wasn't just because his size, it was because this right here. Oh. And he, and he know he know. You know I, he know he know. He's hiding with a smile, man. Yep. No, but you know what it is with me? I used to get disciplined yeah. for making mistakes. So you're taught early not to make the same mistake twice. Like my, like, like my father's been passed away 10 years now, but I still have that, okay, you said something to Adam, he didn't like it. Stay away from that. Mm -hmm. Like you did this step. So like, all the stuff that I be trying to tell people is stuff that I've been through. I used to read the comments all the time and drive myself crazy. Yeah. Like it, it, it got to the point to where I had to get a sports psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. but I was much more advanced than him. Because, like, if I, could, if, if I have to ask you how do you know, I don't trust you. So the guy's like, oh, yeah, I'm like, have you ever played? You ever been at the, at the free throw line down by one and you know you're not a good free throw shooter and you're going to miss? Yeah. You ever played? There's 30,000 people. I don't, I don't even want to talk to you. So they hooked me up with a nuclear physicist. Mm -hmm. And we was talking. And the first thing he said to me was, why do you care? Mm. And I said, what do you mean? He said, Shaq, I'm looking at your contract. I'm looking at all this stuff. Why do you care? He said, bro, you play hard. You, I, you, like, you're not great at certain things. Why do you care? And he made me watch a movie. The movie was The Fan. <clears throat> Robert oh. De Niro and Wesley Snipes. Mm -hmm. So Robert De Niro kidnaps Wesley Snipes, who's a baseball player, and he didn't want to kidnap him to harm him. He just wanted to talk to him. He said, Wesley, you're hitting this and that. Well, how can you do it? Wesley says, I don't care. He said, what do you mean I don't care? He said, I got a beach house. I'm doing this. And all I, got, all I got to do is hit 15 home runs. I get a $100 million contract. And once I stop caring, my shit took off. Mm. All this you see on the wall is me from not caring. Mm. Like, like. In your business, I'm sure, like if you did a skit and a Richard Pryor or Eddie Murphy said something, we know who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they got villain in the game. You may want to listen to that. Mm -hmm. Just like I, you know, me and him always talk. Like when I was playing and Kareem would say something, Shaq's a great player, but he ain't won the championship. I can't say shit to that. Yeah, that's 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 dope, man. But I ain't, but you, it's the two, it's the two basketball players, man. That I, it make you know who God is real, right? Because people are like, okay, Shaq's making free throw. LeBron should drive to the hole earlier in his career. Right. But if you realize God made it fair, because if he wouldn't have gave them that weakness, they would have dominated the game so bad, Bro. it wouldn't have been a game. So they better be thanking God. Stop asking God because Bro, it would have messed right. the whole league up. You, you know what's crazy? I love you even more. Like, a, a, like I tell people that all the time. Hold on, did you hear me say that or you just- No, oh, I tell people no, if I, I could tell... sing, it wouldn't be fair. Cause oh. I'm gonna take every girl. If I, I, can, <laughs> I can't hit a note. So thank, it was always fair. I knew why God didn't make me see it. If Shaq, if Shaquille O'Neal was hitting free throws and LeBron was going to the whole shoot, it hitting wouldn't have been a lead. When he was younger. A lot of players that we give praise to now, yeah, if it would never come to would have never come to light, and then it would have been boring. Remember uh, back in the day um, yeah. when they say the game got boring with too many black people taking over the league, <laughs> and they was like, it ain't enough ball movement because yeah. they couldn't be stopped. That right, ain't right. that ain't basketball at this point. Ain't no is if Le, if LeBron was driving early. Mm. And Shaq, Shaq was hitting threes. I always said that. I always said it was God's way of keeping me humble. It was, yeah, and keeping it. Think it, about it. And keeping everybody my else game, a job. My game watched, with Steph Curry ability. Come on, bro. I watched. A, <laughs> come on, bro. I watched a highlight of all of your baby hooks. 
that thing was deadly, deadly. Because I think it was just this little push and you never missed it. And, and I, I think every big guy needs a finishing move other than just a dunk or power. And to me, that was, that was your move. Kareem never, had the sky, you had the baby. I never heard nobody else say that. Thank you, brother, you made nah, my day. Nah, thank you for what you done, yeah. bro. You really, you really bought light. Let everybody know you're supposed to have fun and life short. I know you don't need my permission, but you can talk about me anytime you want, brother. It, yeah. I don't care, just go in on me. <laughs> Send it to me, I, I'll post it out for you, but I, I love you, I, I, I love how you make people laugh. Uh, I love how you take care of your kids. Appreciate it, man. Like, you know, people want, oh, you got 10 kids. I have a lot of children also, but mm -hmm. I protect, provide, and I love for my kids. So it don't matter what they say. Nah, boy, I don't you know care. Saying? Yeah. I so. tell people all the time, they knew how much I didn't care. They wouldn't waste their time. Mm. I'm going to have to use that one. That was I don't care this much. I, people <laughs> knew how much I didn't care, man. Was there a time when you did? Never in my life. Never in your oh, life? Never? I never cared about Where's nothing. Where does that come from? Man, I... I don't know now. I did lose my mama early. Mm. And so after that, that was like, I lost her at 11. Mm. So that's the worst thing that. could happen. Yeah. At that time, she my real mama on tomorrow. She feel warm. Right, yeah. right. I'm staying with her. So it's like, every, nothing ain't really that serious. Right. Like, after that. Like, bro, it, I don't mm. care, man. I'm talking about, that's what was wrong with my relationships because it's like, if it ain't a real, if it ain't right. real, right. we got to, you know what I'm saying? Before we go out of country, we got to get your student loans paid. <laughs> It's prioritized, so I can't talk to you about that until we handle it. Yeah, let's just handle this nonsense. Yeah, you need to go to the dentist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what is you talking about? Yeah. What you what what we talking about, man? If it ain't prioritized now, because if you ain't prioritized, I'm not going to waste my time giving no intellectual conversation to something. So now let's just have fun. I be trying to teach women how to trap me. I'm like, man, I'm trying to teach you how to trap me. Make me Bro, crazy. Hey, hey. Yo. In the words of uh, in the words of Will Ferrell, did we just become best friends? Hey man, we I've been doing the same thing. So give me an example of things you said. That, like, what do you uh, mean by getting trapped? Like, like okay, so a relationship is about what you need, not what you want. Mm. So if I say, hey, I, I need when I come home to have my hookah ready and rub my feet and just be quiet. I'm giving you the answers to the test. And right if that here. were to happen every day, I can't leave you. The answers to the test. Yeah, yeah that's me some. I, I'm hungry. I don't care what you got on trying to turn me on. If I'm hungry, I ain't studying that. <laughs> when a man is hungry, you can't even think straight. I told everybody I was with in the past, yeah. I'm hungry. My last girl, her mama bought her a cookbook because she was OG and she wow. seen that as long as Wayne got something to eat. Cause he already like his on here. Right. If I'm if I'm here, that means I like I like this, I like the sis. Yeah. I like your vibe. Right. I like to lay with you. Yeah. So now it's the little details. Yes. In the military, they taught me attention to detail, teamwork. In the military? Is yeah, I went to basic training. I ain't go back. Oh, but attention to detail. T was the key. <laughs> yeah. When you're at basic training, are you just seeing jokes everywhere? Like, are you just wanting to make people... Like, have you always wanted to make people laugh? Not, no. Oh, so th this wasn't the comedy stage of your life yet? No, I was trying to get out of mm. basic training the first day I got there. I went there because I, was having a ch I had a child on the way. You were like, so, I need to go. I need some money. So I went on the way to 12th grade. They let you go split ops. I said, I went to basic training in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. But that's, I was wondering why the drill sergeant kept saying, attention to detail, teamwork is the key. Every time we have to do attention to detail, teamwork is the key. And I realized after, it's like playing defense, yeah. you might got to slide your feet. It's the little stuff that people don't feel like doing, but I was like. It's the 48 laws of power. Listen, yeah, people so, will tell you. So relationships, no ex of mine learned how to cook. And they trying to feel out like, because out there I went vegan. And they were like, why you? I was good to you, baby. So many women could give me that coochie. So many women could listen yeah. to me talk. Yeah. But I was giving you a detail that, man, I really needed for me. Do you know, ladies, if you want to cook for Country Wayne, yeah. what is your favorite food? My favorite food is fried chicken. No, no, I'm vegan. Oh, so, vegan now. So I like, I like. I like just some warm. Try just cook it. Can I would love to host food? a cook for country vegan cook off yeah. where beautiful women come in and cook them dishes. One girl was cooking. This is a reality oh, show. I had a hood girl cooking, boy. So she she from the hood. I was with her for about six months. Nobody didn't know it, but she was cooking that food. I had on the road. She was cooking the food. If vegetables are cooked in like pork grease, would you eat that or no? It needs to be full vegan. I wouldn't eat it, but if I was forced to, if I didn't have nothing to eat, yeah. like if I was in a situation where I couldn't afford nothing, but no, nah, I, don't, I don't. You're keeping it clean. Yeah, I keep, I keep it clean. I've been vegan for like um, nine years now, so. Great. Earlier you mentioned Desi. 
Mm -hmm. I know that's your partner. It is my boy. Is it like a competitive thing? Is it like a competition nah, between? Me, me and Dez are really cool. Um, I'm a real competitive person though. And I think all my peers know that, but they know it come from good. Cause I don't try to, I don't came to all of them. Man, so who are some of your peers? Cause uh, I, cause, cause, cause I, I ain't gonna lie, like I saw you first and then like I'm, I'm starting to see all these other cats. Me, all of us in the same class. Me, DC, Dizzy, Carlos, Chico, um, now Drewski, mm -hmm. Jess, B. Simone, Funny, B, Watch Jazzy. Funny Marco, we would Funny you Marco in just there? jumped in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But nobody don't really compete with me unless they compete privately. Like they'll probably get something going on then they, cause they know I'm a dog. Like they know, they, they my peers know me more than other people know me. Mm. Like I'm a dog. Like I'm, you ain't finna I work, but listen here, I'm gonna get it. All right, so I'm gonna get, I just wanna get a little messy. So you have a book, it came out in April, Help mm. Is On The Way, Stay Up And Live Your Truth, mm. available now on Amazon. Um, Forward was written by Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah. Who I'm sure had an impact on your life. For sure, for sure. The cat interview. Mm -hmm. The reason that the the competition and all of that. What did you what was it like for you as a comedian? And it was probably friends with some of the people he mentioned. What was it like for you to watch that? For, for one, it was funny. His delivery. I couldn't go get I overcame it. I like the way I he says things. He, I'm a hover virgin, because you just got to say no. I'm just like <laughs> I couldn't then, after, after that, I'm thinking, man, they all brothers. Like, they grew up the same. So that's like if me and DC them. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, he said some stuff, but I don't know if he said nothing. He didn't say nothing about nobody's children. You know what I mean? He, he did say people had some weird-faced wives. Yeah, that I is. I have not heard but anybody it, 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 say, excuse me, my wife does not have a weird face. I haven't heard that one it, time. It, it, which, it, if I didn't stand up for my wife's face... I would have a weird right face now, right now. He did make a lot of homes. Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable because right now, no women looking in the mirror. Ludacris did a whole rap. Sorry, this is like people's friends. Luda, stay in your lane, man. I'm, I'm sorry, you, I'm a sorry. Comedian, you Y'all feel for the trap, bro. <laughs> a, a, a true comedian, you gonna fall into their world, especially with his cadence. Because yeah, we used to have a cadence of, hey, it's like music. Comedy is, is music. He the reason why I did my special to that cadence because Pippin' Pippin' It was his cadence that Absolutely. transcended to this time. Because certain cadences don't work today. That's why a lot of people keep their old audience. But now, remember, music was like hip, hop, a hippie. I'm going to the store. Now it's like, you know they don't ride it. You know they don't slide. You know that. So comedy have to be like that because, that. because it's going, you're going to lose their attention. Because we got a short attention span because of TikTok and stuff. Right. But Cat Williams' cadence, the reason why you watched it that long. Yes. No other comedian, if you don't have that cadence, you know, I got that country draw. Bernie Mac got it. Right. Can't get you to watch and keep your attention. Mm -hmm. Cat Williams, what That's he did, point. he sold a lot of tickets afterwards. But My first thought was, I think this was the first time where a stand-up prepared a stand-up routine and said, instead of doing this on a stage or a special, I'm going to do this in a podcast, and it's going to be an audience of one, and I'm going to deliver it because... It was, that was prepared, and, and you're right, it was musical, it was the music. way he delivered it. It was music, and, he, yeah. and you know. And, and it made you think. Like, oh. the part, like the part. I watched it three times. She was no. like, there are gems all over this yeah. thing. The part where he said, all you guys with the weird face wives that never do interviews, I went to see how many of them wives oh did interviews. So the first thing I said to my wife was, <laughs> I was like, damn, I was like they he's... can't say, hey, don't say I don't have a weird face, but they can be like, hey, I'd like to do an interview now. And so now as the husband, you're like, what do you mean you want to do an interview? He showed them what a lot of people in the culture really think anyway. Yeah. The reason why Kat did that, because really, to be honest, yeah. he's looking like, like the culture ain't going to tell you. They're going to tell you with action. You know what the Bible the said? that really cares. Saul had... Killed thousands, but David killed tens of thousands. It's a part in your life where you could have the industry and all the money, but you could lose your people. So he, when he did that, I think what hurt them the most, they didn't know the people would go to Cat's side like that. But it's like, bro, mm. no matter how much money we get, how much money, like Shaq, everybody know he got money. But when you ride Shaq, he feels like, it feels yeah, like, you know. dang, yeah. all this money, this man could really walk around and put on a suit every day and point at everybody, literally, because he talked. Yeah. It looked, but it's like, so at the end of the day, the reason why the people went with Cat, because like, man, we was with y'all when y'all, now it's like everything Hollywood, 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 you know. To that, so this man has four life commandments. All you have is your pride, live your truth, don't get mad, get money, stay up. That last one, the 
that last one, the most important one. Stay up? That's, bro. Because I was going to ask you about Live Your Truth, because the reason I was going to ask is, that's what I thought Kat was pointing out, is some of you lived and forgot your truth. Yeah. And now you're living someone else's truth. Yeah. But Stay Up's the most important? Both of them. I'm saying, but Stay Up is the, if you can't figure out those. I like number three, Don't Get Mad, Get Money. Yeah. That's like that one. All of them hit. Yeah. No, they do. That Stay Up, the reason why I do that one, because just in case you can't get it, and you don't figure, you don't understand what I just wrote down. If you stay up, yeah, it's like a relationship. The day you fall off, that woman ain't interested as you think. Yeah, once you start complaining and dragging your feet, she don't want to hear no complaint. The day you come home and think you could be like, "Baby, I was down, I lost it." She gonna like, she gonna be stroke your ego, but she gonna remember that time you you cannot let them see you one time mm. down. The world can't see your head down one time. Ever. So I, I'd say people. I want up. you both to know that they you can, no. like, and I I know that you've experienced. Cannot. I don't want to get to like Doctor Phil shit right now. <clears throat> no, but you I don't think, think you've ever had someone that you really could trust and really open up. Now, if you want to keep it, now if you want to give somebody else some coochie all the time, you know what I'm saying, I'm saying, if you want to, if you want a bad, one, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just being real. Oh, I guess you open up to a woman. Yeah. Never. No. Never. When's the last time you think you've opened up to a woman? We don't. Your whole life, bro. I'm telling you, they yeah, gonna... got players like like I, I couldn't. Me and him related. Yeah, this our first time meeting, yeah, but I, I can did, tell you yeah, guys, there's no, some connection here. Oh no, and yeah. they gonna tell you you can because you know why? But it's a trap. Because you know why? I'm trapped no, no. like you, a motherfucker. No, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. Because <laughs> once you do, whenever something go down, they are gonna throw it back in your face. Well, that's I've had that's that. why. That's real. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah even business though, like yeah. that, that rule even go for business. Oh, like for you sure. stay up, your contracts keep coming. So it's just a universal law. Mm. Stay up and stop. Do you, do you stop have anything that you say to yourself in the mirror, or is it? I know you have like a blessings book. Mm -hmm. Anything to just when you're in the words of Shaq, the D word, depression. Is there anything that you have to get you back on, pot, even if it's like the worst day ever? Man, as long as I got me some food, dog. I'm so thankful, though. Yeah. See, I think the Kurt, I tell my baby mama's my family because they trying to find that peace. And I say, man, first you got to be thankful. I was thankful at every level. Mm. If God stopped me, I, if I was making two hundred, if I was making fifty thousand dollars a year, as long as I could take care of where I'm at, I don't look at nothing I can't have. Mm. So that would keep me. I always feel like my life is better than everybody's life. Don't matter if the Joker can have a gazillion. I agree. I, wherever I'm at, I'm like. This the best thing. I like this car, man. It's something about this old school. Then when I got some money, I bought me a Rolls Royce. And I'm like, you know, but I'm all, I think when you thankful, you don't never, depression can't come because you just looking at the, when you got two legs, I told some, I told my baby mom yesterday, if you got two legs and 10 toes mm. and 10 fingers, somebody got one leg. Mm. So God ain't really listening to your prayer like you think. Mm. He prioritized like, that's why relationships mess up because God don't care. Mm. Y'all talking about relationships and all this going on? If somebody need ten dollars, man, God, like, yeah. God, can you please bring him back? God, like, psh, yeah, I'm gonna send somebody, send somebody knock across your head and hope you got to <laughs> forget about it all. So, man, I'm just so thankful wherever I'm at. You know, thankful to breathe and be alive and yeah. get me something good to eat. Yeah. yeah, he was he was asking me that question. I told him the other day, whenever I get down, I always say it could be worse. Mm. Could be I would worse. say, Shaq, you, you got every commercial. You working? You got a lot going on. Shut yeah, your when dumb I say every commercial, shut your dumb ass up and stop complaining. You got every last one. Thank you. It really you. does. Yeah, you're like Thanos with commercials. I am. So, speaking of business, when when you got that big Netflix deal, mm -hmm. you have to talk to somebody to mentor you, or like you just you and the fellows one day you just said, "Hey, I'm about to get this Netflix deal." My so my question is, how did you get the Netflix deal, and how did you know what to do when you got the meeting with Netflix? Well, first, you know, I already had an agent, CA. You know what I'm saying? I've been with them for about seven, eight years. But I knew I was going to get one because I was the first one off the internet that could really could do an hour. Mm. So when everybody was in, jumped off the internet, they was doing other stuff. I went on that stage. That's why I disappeared on social media. So I was like, I'm going to get a Netflix special because, you know, the energy already there. So when you I was- have audience. You I have had the audience. Hour. So I just went and told them, uh, I say, CA, let's get this Netflix special ready. Hit them up, da, da, da. End up doing a licensing deal. I paid for my special, so I own it. So awesome. I, it returned back to me. So I paid it. You know what I'm saying? They gave me a licensing fee, but I just kind of, it's kind of like, it's like, it's like when you're in college and you're balling. 
you kind of know if you're going to the pros. Right, yeah, you know. You buzzing out here, you don't took that set. That's why I was waiting on the haters to say something, because you can't, because they don't know. I don't tour the set. Stand-up don't work like that. Mm. The haters thought that was my first time, so this the, we finally got the internet, so I'm gonna get the most hate. Yes. But I got the most love, too, so I can't complain, but they don't realize we take that set or tour. I had that, a lot of them jokes seven years. I got tired of them. Yeah. You have to dump them. Are you dumping for this tour coming up? So he has the oh, new jokes. Hey, King none of Hearts those, tour starts in March. Oh, none of those jokes are on the special. And no comedian ain't going to tell you. But what I'm doing, ain't too many people did it, but Cat Williams, Kevin Hart, uh, Richard Pryor, uh, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. I got, what's on that special, none of those jokes on there. I went on the road to come to the club. August, September, October, got a whole new set. So the Louis C.K. thing, what he used to do is he would take whatever his closing joke was, yeah. and he would make it his first joke. Mm -hmm. And then... So then, like, you're going to have to build off of that going forward. Yo. But that has to feel cleansing to throw out all Yo. of the jokes. I don't see a lot of reason why a lot of comedians get stuck because they got the same jokes. And what happens is they think the audience don't notice. A risk, they're still laughing. It's like a relationship. Your wife's still going to moan. But, man, you got to hit a new yeah. You got to hit a new move. Something new. But something got to happen in your life different. A new cologne or something for her to be returned on. Yeah. So they laughing at the joke, but a lot of comedians got the same joke that they had for years. So, so as a comedian, if you say a joke and I take your joke and put my own twist on it and say it, is that still in jokes? That, yes and no, because yes, because we know each other, we comedians, you know, especially if it's one of them bangers that right. we, everybody got their premise, but no, because we all think similar. Because sometimes you can have the same joke. Me and Jim Carrey had the same joke and I didn't even know. Which joke? He never, I loved. never seen him do it, but I heard him talk about it. He said he had a joke about Jesus on the cross. And then if he died, he was like, uh, daddy, get, kill them all or something like that. And I got the same joke. And I never seen his joke, but I heard him talk about it. But if somebody take it and remiss it, and you know, you gonna know, especially yeah. if it's the same time frame. Me and right. Jim Carrey, but yeah, that's comedians steal jokes. That's why I don't do my material around comedians. They gonna take it, even if they think they're not. Yeah, it's just... Okay, but is that bad? Because, like, I saw Akeem Olajuwon do the shimmy. I added it yeah. to my game. So the difference it, is, though, Akeem Olajuwon, y'all could do the shimmy and both get a million dollar check. A, 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 a rap artist could go sing the same song, but if a comedian got the same jokes. Right. What's it on a special We can't. First? We it. really can't tour. But I think now social media is protecting comedians where you could have all those clips. That they're recording at every comedy club right now that if it were to come out later, you have proof which is kind of what we oh, saw. Yeah. Before, there was no proof. Yeah. You could be a, a big name comedian, go watch little guys at a comedy club and steal every freaking joke. I think the difference is, from Hakeem to you, is there's an evolution. It wasn't just a copy. It was an evolving. It was, can you no. take a joke to the next level? I copied. Can you find something, or you straight I, up stole it? I copied everybody. Because my thing is, growing up, I watched a lot. Artist is a thief. No, but growing up, I watched a lot of karate movies and couldn't understand them. And I actually got in trouble with this one day. <laughs> Hello. Coming to the podcast. Well, I actually got in trouble with that. But anyway, I the that. premise is the student must kill the master to become the master. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing that and you know that, I'm going to take that move. Okay, when I dunk, I'm going to get my knees up. Oh, he throwing bowls. Oh, he making a face. I'm taking on. And, and Magic, he's smiling because he's getting them endorsement deals. Mm -hmm. He's smiling. He being nice. And that was my whole game. Patrick Ewan, Akeem, David Robson, Michael Jordan, the way he played the game, and Magic Johnson smile. That was it. Those, yeah. those guys, I, I copied I copied them to a T because I want to be them. I don't know about you, but yeah. jeal I copy. jealousy moves me. Yeah. Like, when I see something, I get jealous, but yeah. I get jealous, jealous on the positive side. Like It's inspiration. Like, I'm, I'm jealous of him. Because <laughs> part. Every part. Let me tell you why. Because deep down, I want to be a comedian. Yeah, when you I say wish you're I could do what he afraid do. of stand up, I I've never no, because, heard you say you're afraid of anything. Yeah, but it's though like one, I think I'm funny, but I'm not as funny as him. I know that I'm not as funny as like Kevin on those guys, but I've seen people when them first three jokes don't hit, they bomb. You, and I don't, well, you were he was that that was the host of the Jamie Foxx, I'm your conscience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was that that was his hey. stand up. Yeah. And like I I've I've never felt so uncomfortable for a comedian before. No, no. Like I watched that man life. Yeah. You know how that happened? Talk about it. 
So we're we're setting up for the Shaq All Star Comedy Jam because I used to watch Jeff Jam, right? And then it was no longer there. I was like, you know what? I want to try to bring these comedians together to help them meet. So that's how we started Shaq's All Star Comedy. So we're in a meeting, me, Jamie, Monique, a couple other friends, people. And this kid, I think his name is Doug, he just came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Hey, Shaq, put me on. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, mom, like, I don't ever blow nobody off. I'm like, okay, you a comedian? Holla at my girl. She knows. Boom, boom, boom. Tamara. Boom, boom, boom. Hello, Tamara. Shout yeah, out to Tamara. Yeah, yeah Tamara. So, we, so we, we, we still talking. Yo, Shaq, put me on. I'm like, my man, I'm, I'm meeting with the comedian. I'm going to get you back. I'm funnier than Jamie Foxx. <laughs> So now Jamie said, "Oh, you are." Jamie said, "Shaq, put him on." I said, For real? He said, "Shaq, put him on." So we put him in the slot. It's, this is all full circle. He yes, was talking okay. about Emmett Smith. Yes, and that's the reason you're a Cowboys fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the Emmett Smith roast. Yes, with the Emmett Smith oh, roast. Yeah, I seen that clip a oh, couple times. God. Yeah, it was, he, he died up there, man. I'm your conscience. Yeah. Tell a joke about Emmett. He's the reason we're here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Comedians do that, though, man. Yeah, that the ones was... who haven't got their shot, they always swear they're funnier than the man in front. But I tell them every day, dog. Bro, comedy, like, the energy of comedy, like Eddie Griffin said, it got a way of weaving people out. Bro, time going to tell in the energy. If you ain't there, it's something the reason why you ain't there. It's and like That's my fear. They say, well, and one was kind of try, trying out for the NBA. Yeah. They say they turned hot sauce into ketchup. <laughs> They did, didn't they? Yeah, said that. I forgot. Hot sauce was more famous than most NBA players. It, it, it seemed like you, I swear to God, man, it's so many people. I tell everybody, out of the new comedians, all of the funniest people in the world, like the new era, is the one that was chosen. They probably, the only reason a lot of them ain't doing stand up because they just ain't put the work in. You got to put the work in. Right. The funniest people, new people in comedy, are the ones that got chosen. Mm. Daisy Banks, Jess Hilarious, DC Young Fly, Carlos Chico, Watch Jazzy, yeah. Funny Marco. These people, I've been around them. Their comedic timing. I've talked to Kevin Hart, or even the old generation. When you're around Kevin Hart and Cat, Cat we even just broke the internet. Yes. Because he's a comedian. Kevin Hart, you ever been around him? This brother no, oh, yeah, he's said quick. He's quick. everybody. Him, him on TNT. You know who else Kenny's is funny? Lips. You know who else is funny off the top for an older gentleman, Steve Harvey. Steve, all them bro, funny. Bro, I've been around Steve Harvey and hilarious dog. Bro, it's, it's, it's crazy. You've been around a comedian. You don't have to give the name yeah. that it was shockingly unfunny hanging around them, but they were funny on stage. Does that even exist? Man, most oh, yeah, a lot of comedians ain't funny on stage now. I ain't say everybody's funny on stage. Yeah. Oh. I say it funny. What do you think of our boy Bubba Dub? Bubba Dub. Oh, I think Bubba Dub. It's just the truth. He's just that natural. He yeah. remind me of um, when, I, when I was coming up, it's just got that country twang. It's just, it's hard not to be funny when you don't, you can tell he don't care that much. Right. When you don't care, man, it's hard to be funny because you talking to a wall. Mm. So Bubba Dub just natural, man. I like Bubba Dub. Yeah, I like Bubba Dub too. Mm -hmm. So man, we know you got a lot of things to do. Brother, I appreciate it's you coming. I appreciate y'all, man. You know all your kids' shoe sizes? Uh, boy, my brother know him. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna give you my number, give me the information, and I'm gonna uh, and I'm gonna send you send your kids some stuff. All right, for sure, for sure. From Uncle Shaq. Yeah, and, and I, I'm gonna make them wear them too. Uh, yeah. So y'all, sure. my kids, y'all wearing them shacks. <laughs> oh yeah, man. hey man. Uh, yeah, so we got a King of Hearts tour coming start in March. You know, so we got 30 cities, King of Hearts. You know, uh, cause I feel like I got the hearts of the people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people got the industry, but I got the streets. And when you gonna be in Atlanta, Miami, or I'm be in Atlanta. I'm be in Atlanta. I think April twelfth. What about Houston? Houston, March fifteenth. What about Miami? Miami. Ah, uh, when I'm in Miami, Tay. May, May the fifth. Yep. All right, I'm ready to check you out in Atlanta Miami, or Miami? Houston. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oof. yeah. So y'all, y'all pull up, man. It's the realest. And you come to my show, you get. Please talk about me on your tour. Oh, I got you. No, I'm, I'm talking about bad. <laughs> like, like bad, like I'm just bad. Please, bad. To just go, go, go. It's hard in. to talk, baby. We gotta hang out first, man. We gotta. Right, just go look, go in. You, you um, you single? Huh? <laughs> 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 what did you say? Jack, I ain't never heard I couldn't you guys hear stuck, him, man. Huh? I couldn't Jack. hear him. No, no. What would you say? Are you single? Single what? <laughs> are, are you in a relationship? I'm not. I'm not married, brother. Oh, okay. Well, we got to hang out, man. So, I, you know what I'm saying? Are you single? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm single. I stay single. I ain't. You don't yeah. smoke hookah, though, right? What? You don't smoke hookah? No, I don't smoke. Okay. You smoke weed? 
Nothing. Nah. He doesn't do anything. Okay. Well, I smoke hookah. It, 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 that's, a, that's his only vice. It, cool. don't, bother, it don't bother me. What does nobody else do? I sold it. I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just love women was always my drug. I couldn't afford to do another one. Yeah. That's, that's enough. Truth well, right women, that's women take energy drug. and money. Yes, you're, time. You already say women. Scale women. Women has always been my drug. Yeah. I can't afford another that's one. That's why I tell you, I don't want a woman want me for my, me, want, want me for my money. Because <laughs> that's all you get. You finna get no time. You think you finna get a long conversation? I mean, I seen you on vacation with your friend. I'm not going. <laughs> but have I a great trip. I'll be good. Yeah. I, I know I left y'all with y'all conscience thinking. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, boy, appreciate you. Come stay. Three seconds. Stay pose for the win. A lot of people ask me, Shaq, you get double team, you kick it out, the game winner. Are you going to throw it to Steph or are you going to throw it to Dame? And I hate to even answer this question. And let me tell you why. Know them both, respect them both, love them both. But sometimes when things are answered like this and they go viral, people take it personal. And it will never be personal with me. So let me break it down. <clears throat> I hope these guys, these guys know me. But Steph is the best shooter. But Dame Time is clutch at that shot. Damn. I'm going to have to go with Dame Lillard. And the reason why I take Dame Lillard, Steph Curry is the best shooter. He does a lot of this. And I think he hits more of those shots moving. I've seen Dame hit a lot of standstill shots of just get in one position. This shot he hit on Paul George when he do this, look how he just gets in one, makes one or two dribble, gets in one position. And I think playing with me, he will be able to catch it, step into the shot, and hit it. With Steph Curry, I think he gets better rhythm when he's dribbling and boom, 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 between legs doing that, and he's got his momentum. It's like he's one of those characters that he needs to dribble to get the zzzz, and once he gets to the top, he lets it go. Uh, both great players, but I think playing with me, I think I would probably be Dame Leonard. You know, sometimes I go viral when I don't even try to go viral. I made a comment one time, and it was based on Reggie Miller and Charles Barkley, because a lot of time when they're on TV, they, ooh, ah, like they've never seen it before. I'm like, bro, you played, you, you was a fan of the game before you played. I've seen that move before. Calm down. So Wimby comes one day, dribble, shoots a three, and Reggie's going off. And I'm like, Reggie, calm down. He's not the first. It was a great move, but your vocal tonality is way too high. Bo Bo was the first to do it. And I hate when you, when you put out statements and then these earthlings, oh, Shaq's comparing Bo Bo to Wimby. I'm not comparing. But after going back, I am comparing. Wimby has a lot more fanfare, and Wimby wants it more. Bow Bow is lazy as fuck. But Bow Bow can do everything women can do and even a little better. Dribble behind the back, shoot the three, nice handle, the floater game. He's just lazy. So I stand by my statement that Bow Bow was the first seven foot guy, seven foot five guy, not seven foot guy, seven foot five guy to have those skills. And, you know, whenever I open my mouth, I always try to open my mouth up with facts. Again, I'm not saying Bow Bow is better. Just saying he was the first seven foot five guy to do that with style. But I just think, you know, Wimby wants it a little more and he definitely has a lot more fanfare and he's protected. You know, a lot of times you can have two similar players, one going to get way more hyped than the other one. It's just, it's just always been like that. I've, I've always been, well, I always haven't been fortunate enough to be on the good hype side, but the way that I'm wired, jealousy motivates me. Now, there's two types of, of, of jealous. There's motivational jealousy, and then there's hatred jealousy. Like, if, 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 if I know I'm better than you and you get more props, that's going to eat me alive, and I'm just going to until I take your spot. See, a lot of people now, he ain't shit in. Never done that. I'm, like, when I first came in, and I, I'm in Orlando, and I'm, I get my little stardom. I didn't know what a superstardom was until I went to L.A. and saw what Magic Johnson was doing. You walk in a restaurant and there's people everywhere and people clapping. I'm like, damn, I want that. 
And I go back to Orlando and I try to do that and they're not really with that at all. It checks Eric. I'm like, oh, that's not working here. Hey, Lakers want to sign me up. Let me go there and I, I, I know that if I get to that level there in Los Angeles, I'm about to get all this. And so you see that and then, damn, why well, ain't getting no calls? And then you look at Michael Jordan. All right, I got to do that. And damn, how come my shoes ain't selling? You got to do what Mike's doing. Man, how come I ain't got no movies, man? You got to look. So every, everything that, 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 that I've done is because of jealous motivation. And I'm not ashamed to say that. Like, I'm, I'm jealous of Bill Gates right now. I'm jealous of Jeff Bezos. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm always on the Forbes. And it's nothing that's going to make me hate. It's just going to keep me working. My advice to Bobo is act like you want it. See, some people just get happy to be here. You're either happy to be here or you want to make a difference or you want to be more than a difference. Like, Bobo played for me in the AAU championship. We had to suspend him one time. We had to suspend him. Yeah, we had to suspend him because he, he missed practice. And then I suspended him one game. We still won. I let him come back the next game. He dominated. Him and my son Sharif, they dominated. But Bobo was just extra lazy. And that was the great thing that my father did. Like, my father did all the, the ghetto karate kid type stuff. I always tell people the stories. I, I've won on every level except college. And when I was a shorty, I used to win everything. So we, we played a game on Saturday, had the little cookout. On Sunday, the motherfucking trophies are gone. So my dad was a drill sergeant. You, you're not allowed to speak to him unless he spoke to you. And every time he spoke to you, it wasn't all positive. So, so now I'm in the pro. Hey, I don't pay for your house. I'm the man. Now. Let me ask you a question. Why well, you always used to throw my trophies away? And he took me to the back of the house. We had a room and all my trophies. They said, I never took them away. I just ain't want you to get satisfied. I, I urge people to keep it going. Like all you youngsters out there, like you want to go viral? Okay, you're going to go viral on Monday. What you going to do on Tuesday? What you going to do on Wednesday? I'm glad you went viral. I'm happy for you. You're getting paid. Your dreams have finally come true, but it's always more. I, I see a lot of viral superstars, and that's all they have to do, viral, tick, viral TikTok. Like, that, that's not a real title. Not a real title. I talked about me personally, my New Year's resolution, thanking the people that helped Shaq become me. This gentleman, his name is Josh. I met him. I don't remember how I met him. But he introduced me to a machine that saved my career. And if I tell the stories, you're not going to believe. Claim. No, seriously. Like, it's, he'll, he'll explain to you, but I just used to put this thing on me, and they used to send stuff through my body, and, like, every injury that I had would be gone. Gone. Erased. I'm talking, at like, for example, after this hip surgery, yeah. I called him. He sent me a big gun. I sat on that thing. I, I recover like, couple days after after hip surgery what was the moment where you met him because i'm sure you remember that sure so we have a cool story actually uh his former father-in-law and ex-wife used to come into the clinic where i was working at with 20 something years ago with legendary dick, Gregory. dick gregory hilarious wow. awesome guy and they used to come in and get treatment on their back and neck and hip and i had seen shawnee in there and nobody knew who she was and i went up and i'm like hey you know who i think would really like this machine and she's like my husband i'm like yeah. And I just threw it out there as a flyer. She's like, can you come to the house tonight? I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll be there. And it's just Shaq and I. And he's like, all right, tell me about this thing. So I put it on his shoulder and he had a bad right shoulder. Um, and it fixed it in five, five minutes. minutes he, he stood up. He's like, no way. This couldn't be real. And so that kicked off a 25 what, okay, year so relationship. Okay, so what is the name of this? So the technology is called Pulse Electromagnetic Field. And our device is called the Electra machine. And I want you to try it before you leave. I know you got to go. Do you have any, any yeah, uh, ailments? Uh, have you ever me? had pain in your shoulder, your back, even 20 years ago? My, my neck, my left shoulder okay. would probably be where I would go. All right, let's do so, it. Yeah, you got to try doing this. this? Yeah, yes. you, you got to try This is the Electra? This is the no, Electra. But hold on. Proprietary information? But proprietary listen, tech? It's, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing illegal. It's not. It, it, All right, so I think I'm getting pranked now. No. But I'm okay with go, it. Go ahead. You, you this is hold so, on, show. So I'll bring it to you. Okay. No, no, but show, hold on, the camera's right there. Yeah, show, show the chain. It, it puts out a very strong and very quick electromagnetic field, and you can actually... And 
you're going to put that on my, on my neck. Yes. You no, not your neck, on your shoulder. No, not no, on your shoulder. Actually, if you feel it, it's still room temperature. There's no heat. Yeah, no heat. Just so, let, but hold on. I've been knowing this cat. I just want to say to my mom and my dad, I love you, to my but, wife and my but listen, son, I I've been know, But hold on. I've been knowing this cat 30 years. And I've had this machine 30 years, and every time I had an injury that I get on this machine, and it, it helped me out. Right. So this is my I trust thing. you. Just go ahead. It ain't because not, I not. trust you, Josh. Just so go ahead. I low, Josh. Put, put it on low. Put it on low. I yeah, will. put it on low, because I don't want him to get popped and be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Just, you'll see. All right, I'm going to thug it out. Whatever you need, Josh, do your worst. And so anytime you're feeling anything. And I'm actually about to start get back on it. What happened? The power went out? Yo. Isn't this like the Iron Man 2? All, right, All right, let me just state this then. There's so much electricity coming from this that it's shutting the other cameras off. So this is our only camera. Okay, Josh. Kenny's laughing right now. Whoa. And it's going right, right to the injury, like right? Pulsing energy at the spot. my shoulder. At the spot where it hurts, neck. right? I, my hand, if you could see my hand. So listen, I'm I'm guaranteeing you. I'm not telling you. I'm guaranteeing. Listen, I'm guaranteeing. Sure about this? Am listen, I about to have a heart attack? No, you're not gonna have a heart attack. Listen, I'm I'm guaranteeing. If you did this for 15 minutes a day for one week, the pain you had gone forever. I'm gonna be like, hello and welcome to oh, wow. <laughs> TNT. Yeah. Uh, and this guy is the reason why I go three MVPs in a row. For real? Yeah. All right. So hold on. I'll pull it away. Let me but, see. But hold on. Hey, this hold on, man. I just need to like process what just yeah. happened, okay? Yeah. You're over here, we're like, and then, and I'm like, all right. I feel good. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Fit, I feel hey, good. 15 I'll minutes know, a day. I'm about to host TNT with him tonight, so I'll be working from 7 to 2 a.m. Usually at like 1 a.m., my body starts feeling sore. So we'll see how it feels tonight. Yeah! You single? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>